Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at potential gradients in electrical fields which falls into the electrical fields topic of the AQA A-level physics specification. So in today's lesson we're going to be looking at how electrical potential can be graphed in this concept of potential gradients. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson we can sketch and interpret graphs of V against R for both positive and negative charges, we can describe how the potential difference can be deduced from a graph and we can consider how the potential gradient of a field is linked to its electrical field strength which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification 3.7.3.3 electrical potential. Now in the previous lesson we've considered the following planes of equipotential in an electrical field. However we can also consider the planes of equipotential to be like blocks. So this is another way of visualizing electrical potential. It's a representation of how the electrical potential varies in an electrical field. It's how the energy stored per coulomb for a charged object varies in different places of the electrical field. So so this produces a potential gradient in the field when you've got a potential difference. Now the potential gradient can be thought of as the change in electrical potential with respect to distance or the change in electrical potential in the electrical field per a certain distance. Now the closer the planes of equipotential in the field, the greater the potential gradient in the field. Now what happens is charged objects can travel down the potential gradient, they can travel up the potential gradient. Now, both examples work has to be done to achieve this. Now when it's going down a potential gradient the electrical field is doing the work moving the charge. So this tells us that the work done is negative because it's being lost by the field. So when there's a traction between charges the work done is negative because it's the electrical field that's doing the work. Now if the, a charged object is moving along a region of no potential gradient okay, then no work has to be done. Now, this is a line or a surface of equipotential. Now, remember, going down a potential gradient means the work done out of the system is taking place, so it's a negative value. But going up the potential gradient, pushing against this gradient, means you have to place work into the system to move that charged object, which tends to be due to repulsion. So because we're placing energy into the system, this gives us a positive value for work done. So when there's repulsion between the charges, the work done is positive. Now, the steeper the potential gradient, the more that has to be done to move that charged object. So a steeper gradient means a lot more work has to be put into the system to move the charged object up the gradient. Now this also is the same when going down, so a steep gradient means a lot of work will be released from the system to move the charged object down the gradient. Now we can graph this idea of potential gradient as well. Now if we place V against R, this tells us that the gradient of the graph is the potential gradient because it's the change of potential per unit change of distance in a given direction. Now once again, the closer the equipotentials, the greater the potential gradient. So this means that the graph to graph this will be the electrical potential against the distance from the charged object producing the electrical field. Once again, the steeper the line, the greater the potential gradient, the more work that has to be done into or out of a system to move a charged particle. Now because we know gradient is the change in y over the change in x, this tells us that in this example, the gradient is the potential difference divided by the change in distance. So we can place this into the equation for potential. So we can say, well, potential difference is going to be equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R. And we're dividing this term by R. So when we collect the R terms, it becomes Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R squared. So what does that mean? We've seen this equation before. It's the equation to work out electrical field strength. So this tells us that the potential gradient, the change in electrical potential difference with respect to distance is the same quantity as the electrical field strength. So when we graph V against D for a uniform field, because the equipotentials are equally spaced out, this gives a straight line, which makes sense because the gradient is not changing. So this tells us that because the gradient is the potential gradient, it is the electrical field strength. If you have a straight line, the gradient is constant, the electrical field strength is constant, so therefore it must be a uniform field. Whilst for a radial field, once again, our gradient is the potential gradient, which is the electrical field strength. So over, over time, 
as you move away from the charged object produced in the field, the equipotentials become more spaced out, the field lines are spread out, so the electrical field strength changes, it decreases, and as a result, the gradient decreases as well, because the electrical field strength is equal to the gradient or the potential gradient produced. So in a radial field, the electrical field strength is decreasing with respect to distance, so the gradient is decreasing. You get that curved line. So we've got a comparison we can make between the two graphs illustrating the potential gradients. In a radial field, the gradient follows the trend for the inverse square law because E equals Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R squared, whilst for a uniform field, the gradient is constant because in a uniform field, the electrical field strength does not change. Now, from our previous idea of potential gradient, we can derive another key idea. Now note, when we have V against R and it's a radial field, you will get a curved line. So to work out the gradient of that curved line, you've got to take a tangent to then work out that gradient or electrical field strength. Now, and if it's repulsion, here V is changing with R for a positive charge, because remember, we always define the field as being produced by a positive charge. So therefore, if it's another positive charge entering the field, you will get repulsion. So V is initially positive and then tends to zero as R moves towards infinity, whilst here V is negative with R for a negative charge because we know that um, it's a positive charge produced in the field, so a negative charge placed into the field will give an attraction. So V is initially negative and tends to zero as R moves to infinity. Now, if we consider the gradient of the graph, we said this before, that the gradient is, is potential difference over R, which is the electrical field strength. So we can say E, is equal to potential difference over R. So we can now rearrange this to make potential difference the subject. So potential difference is E times by R. So this tells us that the area under the line of an ER graph gives us the potential difference a charged object experiences. We know this because the area under a curve is the Y axis value times by the X axis value. So if we place E on the Y axis and R on the X axis, that tells us that the area under the curve produced will be that delta V, that potential difference. So if you're asked to determine the potential difference from an ER graph, you'll have to work out the area under the graph. You can do this by counting the number of squares or by splitting the area up into trapeziums. Now, this concept allows you to derive the electrical potential equation we stated earlier in the course. If we know that E equals uh, potential difference over the change in distance. Therefore, potential difference is equal to E times by change in distance. We can sub in the electrical field strength equation E equals Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R squared. Calculate this through and you get V equals Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R. So from your graphs in electrical fields, you've got to be aware of two electrical properties. If you've got an electrical potential and distance graph, the gradient of the line is the electrical field strength. But if you've got an electrical field strength distance graph, that tells us the area under the line is equal to the potential difference experienced in the field. So if we have learned in today's lesson, we should understand the graphical representations of variations of E with R and V with R. We know that V is related to E by the equation E is equal to potential difference over change in distance. And the potential difference can be produced from the area under the graph of E against R. So if we're being successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can sketch and interpret graphs of V against R for positive and negative point charges, describe how the potential difference can be deduced from a graph, and we can consider how the potential gradient of a field is linked to the electrical field strength. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at potential gradients and have a lovely day.